Okay, that looks good. Now, as I said, because we have a classmate that was absent, and I forgot my mouse, <laughs> I'm gonna have to start up as simple, simple as possible with Chimera. Chimera allows us to do many things. Now, so I forget that you don't have the same so setup as I do. Just remember that you can control the size of the windows. I have a very specific way in which I like to do it and very specific tools to do it. So it doesn't matter how your window looks, just get it there, okay? Then, on file, fetch by ID, and while PDB is selected, all you need to get to where we need to be is to type 3RGK. Okay, because we are connected to the internet, we can just click fetch and that's the structure. Now, because again, I have a very specific way of doing things, I like to go to presets, which only modifies the way lo things look. Click interactive, click, uh, sorry, interactive one and then publication one. So I get this high contrast background, nice colors. I like to do a couple of other things, but I'm not going to do them here because it's, again, my own personal taste. It doesn't affect what we are looking at. Huh? I like to do that, yes, because what's the point of having reflections? <laughs> doesn't help. What's that? <laughs> Does it? So I guess I agree. I don't think it looks cool. It looks supposedly realistic, but then again, you're not expecting light to interact with the ribbons. This is a model of a model, so... Okay, now, I also, or I tried to cover in tools, at least one tool, which was Sequence and PDB Uniprot. Now, this tool, there's actually two tools here that are gonna do something similar, so we gotta be very careful. If we use the one that says Uniprot, this one works in stages. If we click on that one, we get this window, in the case of myoglobin, there's only one chain, so we don't get really many options. We click over here, and we are going to get this information about the structure, pretty much what we saw in the PDB database. And over here, we are going to get the sequence according to the Uniprot, and the annotations over the sequence according to the Uniprot. So here we have in red these two mutations, the one that is described in the title, and another one that wasn't described on the title. Now, for whatever reason, my window doesn't refresh. Yeah, but doesn't matter. I'm just gonna set it to the side. And if you pay attention, I said that there's two tools that do something similar and should not be confused. In the same menu, in the same sub menu, there is this other one that says sequence. If you go to that one and click on it, what we are gonna get is another sequence window but this one is different. What is the difference? It still indicates where residues are missing. It doesn't consider the meta ion as missing. Uh, and the mutations, let's see, are not identified as such. So the original, the wild type sequence should be lysine, but here it's an arginine. And the wild type sequence is a cysteine, but here is an alanine, okay? So if you get the sequence in the second way I showed you, you are gonna get the sequence according to the structure, but this is the sequence according to the PDB, to the Uniprot database. This one is the right one. This one should be considered for this structure as a mutant. Mm, okay? But the one that's placed uh, with ribbons and colors and like, the structure is the original one or the one with mutation? Uh, what would you call original? Okay, in this context, in this context, it's not worthwhile calling it original. The wild type is the Uniprot. Okay. And that is original. And the mutant is as original as the wild type, it's just a mut as two mutations. We didn't, we didn't read the paper, so we don't know where they did it, but they did them, and that's what's on the structure. This one is the structure from this, and this one is from the bottom. The easy way to tell them apart is this one is highlighted the mutations. And in fact, if you see that window over there, there is this red icon that calls mismatches. It's telling us that the sequence on the structure does not correspond to the one in the unit. Okay? Both sequences should, al should allow you to select 
things on the structure. Mm -hmm. That is, they are interactive. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use the one from the PDB. Ah, well, there's another thing. Here, in this case, it doesn't show. The structures have the ugly tendency to name the first residue, whatever it is, number one. If we have a structure of, let's say, 500 residues, and the structure, sorry, a protein of 500 residues, but the structure starts on residue 200, it's likely that the PDB marks residue 200 as number one. So that can lead to confusion to the number. But only if you use the sequence from the PDB. If you use the one from the Uniprod, that's always going to be correct. So I recommend that if you are doing something that, like that, using the sequence for a structure, use the Uniprod. Would you like me to show you an example of that? Mm -hmm. OK. So just let me save this session. By the way, the file menu allows you to save. So save the session. I'm going to call this one uh, class 2pm.2. And let me think, let me think. Close the session. Uh, yeah, sorry, close, close, close. Uh, I should be able to remember one, but I don't. So I'm going to look up a protein that I have worked with. No. I want to make sure to show you one that shows that tendency. Maybe any of these will do. So I'm going to use any random sequence or rather structure. OK, if I'm correct, this is one of the proteins related to the, the nuclear receptors. Those are proteins that are in the cytoplasm, bind the ligand, and then get transported into the nucleus and change gene expression. And as such, they should be very big and unlikely to be crystallized altogether. So using the sequence PDB Uniprot menu, it's only one chain. I click here, I get the number over there, an estrogen receptor. And look at, the, at what happens with the sequence. Pretty much everything in this purple rectangle should exist in the sequence, but it's absent on the structure. So the structure is only well, everything except this in between these parts. Okay? If I was to follow the numbering of that sequence, it's quite likely that this residue, number 307, in the structure will be labeled as number one. And that would be a mess. Two mutations there. So I'm going to open the sequence from the structure just to compare them. Tools, sequence, sequence. You see? Oh, uh, in fact, it says that it's missing some residues from here. And for whatever reason, it assumes that it should be a methionine, not, a, not an arginine. So using the sequence from the PDB, unless you don't care about the real numbering, it's not advised. Use the one from the universe. It can like some mutations. Just because of that, it's more useful. So because I save the thing I were doing with myoglobin, I can just click on that button on the session, and I'm back. Clearly, this one is the one with the mutation, so I'm going to retain that window and close this one. And I'm going to repeat what we did last class. That is, I'm going to select lysine, and in the tools menu, a structure editing and rotamers, I'm going to transform it into a lysine. And if I remember correctly, it was the second conformation, the one that works, so I'm just going to do it. Okay, then I'm going to click on the alanine, or rather the cysteine that should be there. Sorry, how do we know it's a cysteine instead of an alanine? It says so in the, in the information of the Uniprot. Let's see, where is it? The sun height in this window. Uh, let's see. No, it's not here, is it? No. Well, it says that it's a mismatch, and in the header of the PDB, remember that? When we 
let's see which window is that this one yeah so if you go to the display files and the header Here. The, in the structure is these two, like one of these residues, the alanine, and in the sequence it should be system. I know it's not in the most obvious place. No. So I, this is the, <coughs> the alanine, showing it as sticks, there. And the same procedure, tools, structure editing, rotamers, and system. Oh, C C H D and C D C P R. Oh, I don't. I didn't notice we have four, so I'm gonna go for C. Shouldn't be that problematic. And I he, I think we don't care which one. I'm gonna just pick the first one and click OK. Okay. Now I what I didn't do and nobody told me. It just should remind me. I didn't remove the sulfate. So selecting residue sulfate and bond atoms delete and the same for water, residue water and actions delete. Now there's only protein and heme group. Uh, there we have a couple of tools that we can use very effectively to understand the sequence. So I'm going to select again the lysine and something that I didn't do there was focus on the lysine. That is the lysine. Now that it's selected, we can do a couple of things. In the tools menu, in structure analysis, we can understand those properties. We can check which other parts of the protein are making hydrogen bonds with this residue, which other parts of the proteins are making clashes, and pretty much everything in that list. The hydrogen bonds are usually the most uh, interesting this is, except for this value, the default window. And all we have to do is use this selection. If you read here, it says only find hydrogen bonds with at least one end selected. So that means that because I have the lysine selected, it's going to count the hydrogen bonds, but it's only going to tell me those for this recipe. So make sure you select it and click OK. So as it is, we get this result, one hydrogen bond found. And I don't see it. I'm going to hide the ribbon. Yeah, I still don't see it. I don't know what is the molecule that is making that hydrogen bond. But supposedly there's one. Now that it's selected, I'm going to go to the tools again. And in structure analysis, I'm going to find clashes. And this window is a little bit more confusing. You have to tell it by pressing that button what you want to find clashes for. It's already selected, the lysine. And if I click designate, it's going to use the lysine to compare to everything else. We can select between clash and contact. And the difference is that if you select clash, if we were to consider atoms as spheres, they would have to overlap by 0.6 Armstrong. That would be a clash. If we select contacts, they have to be, they don't have to overlap, but they are more, most, what this is saying is 0.4 Armstrongs apart. So they are nearby. So if I click on contact first and click apply, I get 15 contacts. And one of them gets shown. That is a contact, a carbon atom and another carbon are pretty nearby together. This is a better, a better way to visualize things as opposed as to show spheres, for example. Here you can see that they are close, right? But we don't know how close. If we use the clash tool, uh, sorry, there we can see which atoms are making clashes with what atoms. So this mutation that we made is not perfect. These two residues are kind of close together. Now we can actually see the hydrogen bond that was discovered. These were the contacts, right? So they are close. 
So it's nothing to worry about, that's normal, they are close. Now if I change my criteria to clash and press apply again, those atoms are overlapping with that uh, distance. So these are really too close together, maybe unrealistically so, right? There's no reason for a charge and a neutral atom to be really close. If they were opposite charges, such as the nitrogen and the oxygen, that kind of makes sense. So maybe this residue that we mutated is not perfect, but at least it gives us the structure in the wild type sequence. I don't understand what you refer us to the. Okay, so let, but let me see which one are you doing, the clash or the contact? Any one of those. Okay, so select the contact, press apply. Okay, now select or go to actions and select sticks. Actions, look, I'm gonna show it on the screen. Actions, atoms and bonds, uh -huh. stick. Click on that. Yeah. Did, ch did something change on your screen? No. Okay, now go back to actions, uh -huh. atoms and bonds, and click on show. Uh -huh. Did something change on your screen? No. Really? <laughs> How did you manage that? Show me the yours. Yeah, that screen again. The one for the selection. <laughs> ah, yeah. Click this <laughs> checkbox. Uh, yeah, I think that I, my window is a little bit different from yours. I have selected this. Uh, okay. I didn't know that you could save yeah, this as a yeah. preference. Yeah. Now, if you do the sell the showing, it's gonna show you all of these atoms that are nearby and the contacts, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's fine. Did it work? Mm -hmm. We kept 11 designated atoms instead of 9. Is, is that okay? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh -oh. <laughs> How did you get that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so do this for me. All right. Select clear selection. Click, uh, press in your keyboard the control key and click on one atom on the license. Control key and put the mouse on an atom on the lysine and click on it while pressing the control key. What is the difficulty? <laughs> well, it looks like that. <laughs> What's that? And you have the last, the latest version? Hmm. There's a debugging tool, but I don't remember what it is. Let's let me check while they try to figure it out. Yeah, I think. Preferences? No, this is this one. Okay, if you go to favorites, preferences. Uh -huh. And this window, go to the general preferences. In that general preferences, there is this menu that says Debug OpenGL on startup. Mm -hmm. Click on true. Okay. Save, close the program and open it again. And when you open it again, it's gonna give you a window with several check boxes. <coughs> Uncheck everything and save. And try to use it like that. Okay, so you still haven't been able to select anything? And we still have the eleven atoms. You haven't labeled it. So that's a no, right? Yes. Okay. So go to the sequence and find this residue. Everything. 
Yeah, well, go to that sequence and select this license. Make sure that there's only one residue in green. It has to read lysine 45 or arginine if you didn't change it. Okay, so now go to the find clashes and click on designate. And it should look like that. Make sure that your window looks like mine. Clashes is in tools, structure analysis. I think it's in other menus too, but it should be there. Well, I have nine. I don't know what you're selecting. Did you <laughs> make the mutation? What? Did you make the mutation? You sure? Okay, so do me a favor. Select the license. Then focus and set the pivot. Okay? No, not yet? Yeah, we are on focus. Okay, now click on tools, sorry, on presets and select all atoms. And tell me if you see something that shouldn't be there. Well, just look at this. If you see something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you don't have to select it, but if you cannot recognize it without the selection, better select it. And also check the model panel, because if you have more than one model, you are selecting more than one thing. So. So you have an arginine, not a lysine. So you didn't do the mutation. That's the reason why you have more <coughs> atoms. <laughs> Did you save the right one? Yes. Well, it should be nine atoms now. Okay. You still get eleven. Let me see that. Why? No, just that's what you said. 
to the Let's see. 45. Is this one is uh, atoms and bonds. So I don't know what it says, so focus. Yeah, both. <laughs> it's okay, take, take advantage that we have the class for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, but you save it. Well, technically, you could copy hers, and it should work. <laughs> you but you know, it's not bad that you did it, because what I want to show you next, it doesn't doesn't make a difference. What's the matter? What, what? Well, I selected the residue and just changed the way it looks like. System. Sis. Sis. It did it again too. The que me costó abrir. Tuve que descargar las tres diferentes para que se abriera la aplicación y ya no sé cuál es. Tengo tres diferentes. You have three different ones and you don't know which one was the last one. I have three here. Because ah, well, put it, put it on the uh, applications. Just drag it to applications so you don't have a problem. What are you doing wrong? The sequence is the myoglobin. So just say that you only get yeah. one red. But you are you but you sure you have but you have the arginine. The other one is cysteine. Which one are you referring us to? Okay. <laughs> So it's selected. Go to actions. Atoms and bonds. And show. <laughs> May I don't, sometimes it fails because di different computers have different graphics settings and they cause this problem. Just that showing this, the hydrogen bonds and the cla and the clashes. No, that's a, that then you are not selecting right because that was a lysine, wasn't it? Show me the selection. Okay. And what's the count? Four atoms. How do you know? Designate? Click designate. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's let's do the hydrogen bonds and the atoms again. Now, if you use the mouse and put it on top of an atom, like in the lysine, and press the control key, key and click, control key and click, over the anatom, any, doesn't matter, as long as it's the lysine. Control click. Mm -hmm. Click, C L I C K, click. It should select one atom. Okay. Now, if you use the arrow keys, 
You know what the, are the arrow keys? They have an arrow. Uh, you press the one that points away from you. And now, if you do that, you select the whole recipe. Didn't you? Did you press the arrow key? No, not that one. Another arrow on your right. That's an arrow too. Just press stop. What's the matter, Felicia? Wait, for where are you reading? Are you reading? If you are reading here, every single time you change the selection, you have to click designate again. How do you manage to do that? How do you mean me? Let's see, take step back. Why don't you use this? Okay. So, this select, I'm going to select one. One. Oh, yeah.
So now, if you click like that, just to tap, it selects both, but you need just one. So how is it going to be seen? Not good? Okay, yeah, and you're always like that. I thought you were happy. I said happier. This is it. No, no, no. Yes. Just, just pick up, okay. And this is the step? This one. Let's see. Oh, yeah, terrible. Yeah, three is this. Yes, every is more possible. Yeah, it doesn't like you. Yeah. Like in his childhood. Anyway. Who is the one who is the one who is the one who is So now try to do the other one. Go for the this alanine. Change it to try to change it to system. Okay, so at least some of you are at this step, right? Now you will ask me, but professor, we did that. We created those clashes, right? How can we make sure that they are as realistic as possible? Well, these are not clashes. These contacts. How can we make sure that they are as realistic as possible? Well, we need to leave this. I think we, not, we don't need to maintain the selection on the screen because we already designed the, uh, designated the atoms, okay? Yeah. So that program is going to still think these atoms are selected. But on the screen, what we're going to do is something kind of different. It's going to take a while on your computer. So first, observe it on mine, and then you can try it. So tools, the same structure editing, but this time I'm going to go to this option that is called minimize structure. What this part of the program is going to try to do is to use a couple of computational tools where it's going to assume that the protein can behave like a group of rigid spheres and try to make the structure as close to ideal as possible. Okay? Mm -hmm. These are my settings by default. Only this method of uh, minimizing the energy and this update interval is important because it's going to try to change the screen as many times this number can be divided by this. So the fewer steps, the faster is going to be the process. And I have to click minimize. It's going to ask me because the structure has no... Did I click? There. Because the structures in the PDB never have hydrogens, it's going to try to add them. And I usually go for that method, the unspecified. There are hydrogens now, that were not before. It needs to use uh, this so-called force field. This is used for proteins, nucleic acids, so this is a standard. But this one means that for the heme, there's going to have to be a calculation. Just without going into details, 
This is a very quick calculation, and rather because these are known, they just are read from a file. But this means that the program is run a, gonna run a, a semi-empirical quantum mechanics calculation. You don't have to worry, as long as you have a protein, this usually doesn't matter. I'm gonna have to click OK anyway. And as far as I remember, this usually works. If you are doing this in a specialized manner, all you have to make sure is that this makes sense. Iron should have a charge of plus two, depending on the oxidation state, and the rest of the heme of minus two. And this is just because the heme is not only binding the iron, but it has a couple of acid regions on the, ex on the outside. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Just a second. Let me just make sure it's running. There. Minus four. So it's the him, it's the him collecting the iron, which should be a plus two, but on this side it has two acidic regions, so those should be negative two, and they are not neutralized by the method. So you have to go to tools, structure editing. Ah, okay. So this should be a thousand. The one on top. Not only raise that one. Just click on the one above. Of an ugly man. There. <laughs> and on this one that says 10, just leave a zero. Good. And on the one that says 10, 100. No, 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 above, above. That doesn't say 10. 100. No, 100. There. And click minimize. Yes. <laughs> Structure editing minimize. But wait, for the critical part, in fact, it already happened. We don't have the, the clashes, the contacts anymore, only the hydrogen bond. Mm -hmm. And I want this is going to change as soon as this step is finished. So I don't know if we're going to miss it or not if we are not careful. Well, somebody keeps a watch on that. It should change. If it changes, let me know. Uh -huh. uh, perfect. Minimize. Perfect. Yes. Oh. The, it depends. If you already did the hydrogen bond and the clashes, yeah. nothing has to be selected. If you yeah. haven't done that, right. select the lysine. The lysine that we just mutated. Click OK. Well, they wait in the next window. Uh -huh. Select the option at the bottom, unspecify. <laughs> and click OK. Uh -huh. As soon as you get... Ah, you didn't erase the sulfate. But can I do it right now? No, too late. Just click OK. Uh, click OK. And this is the step that is going to take a while because it's calculating things that actually our heme group is kind of complicated, particularly because of the iron. So the easiest way to select things is use this again. For example, is this lysine 45? Yes, it is. And it's selected. And to get close in the view, go to actions and pops. Now we can do the tools, the structure analysis, and find clashes. We need always to designate atoms. And then make sure it's on contact, which is the one we selected, and apply. There. So that contact is there. If we add this, it's going to select the things that are in contact. And if we go to show, now we see everything that is selected in contact. They are not cut because the selection only selects atoms. We can change okay. that and actually show everything that is touching those atoms. Okay, yeah, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, I think that even if the selection is here, we should be able to go to structure editing to minimize okay, okay. here. I'm going to change. I'm going to leave these simpler values here. So, it starts so I hope. <laughs> um, minimize. <laughs> this is the is okay. <laughs> Yeah, it takes, it takes a while to calculate those okay. things. I usually use this method. 
and then this one. So in mine it's already changing. It says down there starting a thousand. Did you see? It move? Yes. <laughs> so every time those hundred steps pass, there's gonna be changes. Maybe some are gonna be subtle, others are gonna be big. But I guess, yeah, did you see it again? The hydrogen bond seemingly stills there, but I don't know about the contacts. This one's a I don't see this one updating. Okay, just go click OK there. And now this is the step that seemingly seemingly nothing happens, but you have to wait. <laughs> so you are Windows, right? There is no way for you to say if something is running in the background, right? You know the task manager? Yeah. Don't destroy everything. Do <laughs> you, you, you know how to open it or not? Do you know how to open it? Yes, I do. So open it then. All right. If you crash it. <laughs> so in my computer, it's already done. So I'm going to click on clashes again, on actually on the contacts. And now it detected no contacts. So this minimization step may this rotamer that I selected into something a little bit more natural and relax the overall structure so, so that it fits well. And for no. something that is important for us is that the hydrogen bond seemingly is still there, which is important because what we know from biochemistry is hydrogen bonds stabilize structures. So this was the crash course of doing this. In the PhD class I teach, I show them how to do this on the command line. So it's, it's more powerful. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> so, but you are going to suffer alone. Is that the only difference that you want? Ah, <laughs> oh, no. If you put it to sleep, you can take it home. So, but before you go, before you go, let me show you something. As I've been telling you, the reply log has all of the information. So, if you look here, if you, look, if you look at your reply log, here is the list of the results for each step of the calculation. So the protein started here. This was the original energy in the structure. Oh, sorry, this one, minus 6,000. In the first step, it's almost twice as small, or twice as big as you prefer, and it changes throughout the, throughout the minimization. <laughs> And if you take these values and put it on an Excel, an Excel sheet, you can see that it goes like this until it stops changing. And that is what we want to see with these calculations. Once you have a value that doesn't change, that is perfect, and you use the structure in that condition. The minimizing is for the protein. The maximum potential. The smallest potential energy. Well, yeah. The smallest because. Having, it, having with the with the largest positive number would be like having this here and letting it go. It's gonna fall. What you want is put it right there, so it's no longer being. It's not gonna be able to fall because it's in the lowest potential energy. <laughs> save the session. Don't forget to save the session. Just set, put it to sleep, and you let it continue. Just wait. So did you open the task manager? Yes. And was it showing that camera was working? Uh. <laughs> what crashed? The task, the task manager or the camera? <laughs> or you don't know. That's a good answer. Just let it sit for a while. Tell you what. In my computer it took what? Like... Five minutes? Wait 15 minutes. And if you get no changes, kill it. I will save it. Yes. <laughs>